Today, we're in the volunteer state and talking with two Tennessee organizers about the work they're doing to reduce gun violence across Tennessee communities. Right now, on CSGB at Home. Hello and welcome to CSGB at Home. My name is Andrew Patrick and I'm the Director of Political Communications at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Today we're speaking with CSGB student organizer Sierra Hinkson and uh, our returning champion Sierra Hinkson and mm -hmm. founder of the Nashville Peacekeepers, Clemmy Greenlee. Uh, I want to thank you both for taking the time and joining us here on CSGB at Home uh, to talk about uh, what's going on in Tennessee. So let me start off with Clemmy, uh, you are the founder of the Nashville Peacekeepers. Um, can you tell us about the work that you do and, and, and how long you've been doing it? And um, um, what is the story behind the Peacekeepers? Well, first of all, good morning and thank you guys for allowing me to be a guest. Uh, and let me correct you, it's Nashville Peacemakers. Peacemakers, my uh, fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure we don't pull up Peacemakers, Keepers, and then go somewhere else. But yeah. Um, I, I mean, let me just say my son was murdered in 2003 uh, as my only child. Uh, I didn't understand the depth of gun violence like I do now, um, just be honest. Uh, even though when that happened, I still didn't really dive into the gun violence. I dug into uh, homelessness and sex trafficking. But as I tried to focus on those two things, I, it just kept happening. Gun violence, murder, gun violence, murder. Whether it was gang-related, property, gentrification, or just robbery, it was gun violence. Uh, police shooting, it was gun violence. And it just kept on coming back around, clicking in my head that I, I need to step over here, not just because of my son, but because of everybody's child. In 2007, is when I shut down everything else that I was doing and went to my brother and told him I was ready to tackle the gun violence. And so that's where the birth of uh, uh, Mothers Over Murder came in place when I started meeting other mothers that has dealt with the gun violence of the murder of their kids. And that made me go, um, I have to be their voice. And they don't, nobody's listening, nobody wanna listen. And majority of it was because of police brutality from the gun. And then I took it and ran with it because I'm fighting the streets, the gangs, or whatever you want to call us uh, with the guns. But if I'm getting them to kind of calm down with the guns and you still got the police officers shooting with the gun, well, the same thing goes for me. If, I, if this person who killed my son with a gun get 50 years to life where that police officer that killed somebody kid with a gun need to get 50 years to life. And that threw me in the rain. I mean, yeah, like we talk a lot about at CSGB about how police violence is gun violence. And like you're saying, if everyone's just shooting, it's just not, life is not good for communities. It's not building healthier communities. Um, so, so as you're doing this work with the peacemakers, peacemakers, uh, have you found that there are unique experiences uh, for uh, Black women in the gun violence prevention space, in the community organizing space? Uh, and if so, what are some of the, the forms of support that are needed uh, to assist women of color uh, in, this, in this arena? Oh, definitely. I, found, I find a new, unique space because, number one, we're women. Number one, we're Black. Uh, it's a male ego figure out here definitely for that uh that we don't want to be labeled as a woman that can out smoke speak the man on any issue whether political or as grassroots so when we jump out here the only leverage that we really have is the word the crying mother and um i kind of like that and i don't like that because we are powerful women's that has a voice that wants to let everybody know that we need to be heard and don't have nothing to do with the tears because if this was happening on the other shoe where all Caucasian white boys, white people, children getting murdered and gunned down like our black babies are, whether it's the police or the streets, but then is that gonna be a white crying mother? I mean, what, what's the difference? It's the same. It's a mother that had carried a baby for nine months in a womb and now you see me bearing this child for senseless gun violence. So the uh, support that I know we need, I know I think we need, the support that I know we need is 
is from the higher of of, of corporate. Uh, they need to bring more women in to sit at the table when you're discussing this. The police department need to bring in more mothers of color when you're discussing the cadets coming back out on the streets. Uh, when you had a police shooting, let us come to the meeting when you are analyzing what then went on. When you have a street shooting, if nine out of 10, we know the young man that killed our child. Me and the mother work together, go to church together. Or uh, my son's murder, we, he stayed at my house. I bought him shoes when I bought my son's shoes. So why can't we be involved with the case, period? Um, we need more women's to stand and quit being afraid, but we need more men in higher places to come and let us know it's okay and ain't nothing gonna change until you bring us to the table. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly like you, you said, like we have seen uh, when a white high school is gunned down in a mass shooting, it has national attention. Uh, people start uh, like, like calling for action, whereas in uh, impacted communities and communities across the country, including Nashville, uh, these type of mass shootings are happening every single day. They're not bringing media attention. They're not bringing uh, the attention of other uh, the, our citizens, fellow citizens. Uh, and I think it's something that the gun violence prevention movement is catching up to, grappling with, and understanding better than it has in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to lift all these up. We need to reduce gun violence in all of its forms everywhere, not just what's getting the headlines, uh, mm -hmm. but, but this community violence that's really a plague uh, on the success, success of African communities all over the country. So, so th thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, switching gears a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. Sierra, um, we, last time we spoke, uh, Governor Lee had just signed the permitless carry bill. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what the reaction in Tennessee has been amongst advocates and activists uh, that you work with to this bill uh, that, uh, that is a, a bill that will most likely increase gun violence and is very dangerous. Yeah, definitely, Andrew. Um, also, thank you for having me here. Um, so this permitless carry bill or constitutional carry bill as it's often being called, it's really not a popular bill in Tennessee. There's been a lot of pushback from so many different spe spheres from lawmakers, um, law enforcement, gun shop owners, um, like, for example, Representative Antonio Parkinson, who represents the Memphis area, he is like a self-declared pro-gun Democrat, and he recognizes how dangerous it is to allow people to be armed without any knowledge of gun safety, because um, prior to this, as part of the um, process to acquire a permit, you had to take a gun safety class. So now that there is no process to acquire a permit, there's no gun safety when you purchase a gun, which is incredibly dangerous. So not only are we increasing the supply of guns, but we are increasing the supply of guns to a population um, that has no requirements on learning how to safely operate the guns, how to keep the guns away from children, um, which is so, so important. Um, we have a lot of law enforcement who's worried about just that increase in availability and the impact that may have on crime. Um, in fact, there was a coalition, the Southern Christian Coalition of over 500 faith leaders from across the state. They signed a petition to stop the passage of the bill. This was before Governor Lee had signed the bill into law. Um, and Sierra, are you still with us? Uh, well, let me go to my next question to you, Clemmy. Uh, so as you know, in your work with this, uh, gun violence is a multifaceted problem. It requires a multifaceted solution. Uh, we've talked about the need for gun violence um, interruption, interruption programs uh, to reduce community gun violence. Uh, unfortunately, it got voted down in the subcommittee this year in Tennessee. Uh, but, but, but what kind of resources would an organization like yours need uh, to, to help uh, like from, from the state, from the federal government uh, to, to, help, to help your work? Uh, number one, funds. 
See, I tell people all the time, they say, well, Clement, maybe if you had strong board members, maybe if you had uh, stronger volunteers. No, we don't need that. Uh, I mean, we need that. Don't, that's not what I'm saying. But let me say why I say funds first. Because nobody can change your community but you. But if you don't give us nothing to work with, then there's nothing we can do. So I've asked them over and over and over. I've even just went down and told them how much money I could save them from the jails and the graveyard if they gave me an opportunity. And the hospitals. And the hospitals. The medical yes. bills. Yeah. So yes. yes. And I've, I've only asked for $50,000 and 90 days to leave me alone and let me show you what I can do with my community. Then I'll show you the model where I can take it to another community. I can't get that for nothing. You'll either give me $5,000 or you'll give me $10,000. I got a meeting with the mayor today at one o'clock to talk about a $5,000 or a $10,000 grant. What can I do with that? Time I get one kid, convince him to give me that gun, buy him a whole new outfit, take him to eat, and find him some kind of camp to get into, that I'm through. So the support is funds. The support is people that's, that's into the gun violence, especially the NRA. If we could just sit at the table with them. See, they won't force us or force a way for them to let us sit at the table with them, but we got to hear them and what they got to say and what they don't want to say. But the governor, the mayor of Tennessee and all cities, they have that power to get us at the table with them. I'm thinking for a fact, I know if I had an opportunity to meet any one of them, that I'd be able to kind of change their mind. But other than any of all of that and waiting on all that, because it probably won't never happen because of Tennessee don't fight enough. I don't care if it's Clarksville, Laverne, we just give up. We just feel like it's a conservative state, true enough. Or uh, Nashville, Grand Ole Opry, uh, the builders, the developers, the tall and skinny, uh, the cranes. And so all of us is getting pushed back anyway. So we have no voice, we have no sight, and we don't even exist. So I'm telling everybody, I don't need nobody to do anything for me, but to help me get some real funds to my grassroots uh, community and let us show you guys what we can really do. They don't, they don't want to pass this bill. They know if they pass this bill, they have to come to people like me, another organization, grassroots, that's been out here for years. And they know we're going to change it. So then there goes the stopping of the hospital emergency room. There goes the stopping of the jails and the beds getting filled up. And there goes the stoppings of them not being able to go run up on you, shoot you in your back, or take your drugs and take your dirty money and keep it for themselves. So it's a lot of stuff at stake here. The reason they're not trying to do anything, I'm just going to go and jump into Chicago real quick. When I found out Chicago had 500 murders a year, oh, that devastated me. It made me angry. It didn't make me sad. It made me angry. That itself speaks for what we need. We need our own money to let us go into our own communities and clean them up because nobody else can because they don't live there. It's about making the investment. It's like putting funds in to build up these communities, build safer communities, and it helps everyone across the board. Mm -hmm. This isn't uh, like a gun violence prevention policy, like an assault weapons ban or something uh, that's not going to go in Tennessee. This is something that Tennessee can do, and I think we can get there. Um, Sierra, welcome back. If you could just expand on that, uh, and, and what are some of the ways that advocates uh, can encourage their officials to support, oh, excuse me, uh, the violence interruption and prevention programs uh, that was just recently voted down uh, in, a, uh, in a subcommittee in Nashville? Yeah, thank you um, the welcoming me back. I'm sorry for Wi-Fi issues, but there are definitely some ways that people can try to encourage their officials to um, support these really, really important violence intervention and prevention programs. So the first step is really educating yourself and learning about what these programs can look like. We have, these programs have existed like across the country in Chicago and Oakland successfully. So learning about these programs, what they can look like, 
and then thinking about what might be best for your own specific community. So um, if you wanna learn more, you can visit the EdFund website or if you are interested in organizing a workshop, an education to action workshop to learn more about how to advocate for VIP programs, you can email us at 10can at efsgd.org, shameless plug. Um, you can also reach out to your um, elected officials via letter or email and just let them know that violence intervention and prevention programs are a priority for your, their constituents. Um, you, if you're part of any organizations or if you're fellow advocates, you can CC them on the email to show that this is um, something that a lot of people are supporting. There's a lot of public support for um, programs like this. And um, if possible, try to get a meeting with them. It's always great to have a, for them to have a face to say that this is like a real person that will be protected by these types of programs. Um, it's, that's always a great option. Um, and just be sure to explain the ways in which these programs are essential for your specific municipality. Um, like for example, Clemmy, if she were to meet with an elected official, she can talk so much about how much it would be important for Nashville because she's a Nashville native. And, and that really gets through them as well because they're representing the people of their district. And I'm not sure if you guys discussed the um, different violence intervention funding that passed in Nashville and in Memphis. Okay, so there, although the, um, on the state level, the bill was struck down, we are seeing some local level funding, which is actually really encouraging. Memphis um, passed a couple million dollars to go towards gun violence prevention funding, which is huge in Nashville. Um, funding was also recently approved to go towards community safety. They created a new position called community safety coordinator. We met with him, me and Clemmy, um, Mr. Ron Johnson. It was a great meeting. And um, it's just really encouraging to see, at least on the local level, that um, we have our elected officials really starting to take this more seriously and invest back in their communities and, and creating life promoting communities. Yeah, absolutely. And like, um, like President Biden is making this a priority. He spoke about it in his address to Congress. He wants to put a huge investment uh, in his, uh, his, his American jobs bill. Uh, for funding for this. So the funding will be there from the federal level. Will the Tennessee lawmakers use that funding available to make their community safer and to protect their constituents? That remains to be seen, but I think um, if it happens, when it happens, uh, it's because of the work that you guys are doing. Uh, Sierra Hinkson and uh, Clemmy Greenlee, thank you so much. Thank you for all the work you do. And, uh, and, and please take care and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so Thank much, you. Andrew. Bye. It was nice to talk to you. Bye.